I, I, would, I wouldn't call it a pack. They've just adopted that because it's a group of dogs. But the dogs don't function the way the biological definition of a pack is, right? So they may not even, the dogs may not even have any relationships with each other. They could easily just be a group of dogs that are trained. And so they walk, and they're walking as a group. But it's not technically a pack, but even though they call it that. But aside from that, the benefits of those, if they're done well, frequently, are that the dogs are pretty comfortable around other dogs. They, learn, they can learn good dog social skills if it's done properly and those kinds of things. And the dogs are under control when you're out walking them. They learn to stay behind people and that kind of stuff. Like they learn to walk a certain way and that's how somebody that's managing multiple dogs uh, manages multiple dogs. The downside, lots and lots and lots of pressure involved, right? You can't have that number of dogs under control unless you're thumping on them all the time, right? And because that they want to keep the dog behind them, and you have multiples, the way that's handled is purely pressure training, 100%, right? And if you're going to have that many dogs out around each other without very carefully uh, controlling the composition of dogs, you're going to have some dog fights, and they prevent dog fights also with lots of pressure. So when they're initially doing their group walks and stuff like that, they have trainers walking around with whips and sticks and stuff, and if the dogs start to get worked up, they whack them over the heads and they leave that other dog alone, and they manage that whole thing. So there's stuff that can come out of that that's useful. It, it, I'm, in no way does it interest me in that the stuff that's necessary to make that many dogs that suppressed as a group in general is not something that interests me about dog training. But there are lots of people in the world uh, that are really bothered when their dog can't be around other dogs and with other dogs, right? So there's a lot of people that, that have dogs, so the dogs can play with other dogs or have dog friends, and that's a big deal for them. And so for those people, if they have a dog that's not so good with other dogs, then this looks like magic, right? And so there's a huge group of people that are willing to do that. And for somebody that's a dog walker that gets paid per dog, the more dogs they can have out at the same time and have them under control, the more money they make. So they're total cash cow for the people that do those things. I don't think, it doesn't necessarily help with all dog to dog interactions because it's so controlled and that doesn't mean your dog's going to be friendly with every other dog outside of that circumstance. And then there's just a lot of kind of traditional Cesar Milan style pressure type stuff to make the dogs, if you watch how the dogs aren't walking along like, hey, I'm out for a walk, they're walking along like this, right, because they've all been they stay behind me. <laughs> Lots of that stuff, right? So, if that's your cup of tea, totally nothing wrong with it. There are people that really like it, people that need to manage multiple dogs. The people that run those things tend to be really good at kind of watching a group of dogs and making sure nobody's getting out of hand and intervening when they need to. So there's a skill set involved in doing that kind of stuff well. It's just not my, not my cup of tea. I like, um, and when I say dogs aren't pack animals too, so the, I mentioned before, I think, when I was talking about um, genetic development in dogs and uh, genes as triggers, that Coppinger book that I re referenced, Raymond Coppinger's book, um, Dogs, he talks about it. And he's uh, a kind of student of the evolution of the domestic dog. And where people say dogs are descended from wolves, he says, no, they're descended from a common canine ancestor. And the domestic dog evolved when humans stopped um, being kind of nomadic hunter-gatherers and started to have settled uh, villages, when people stopped moving around so much and started staying in one place, right? Because as soon as humans stopped moving around,